talk about the meal. Today we are going to celebrate Cinco de Mayo with avocados. Avocados are native to Mexico and we're going to put a French spin on it, of course. So uh, avocados are wonderful. They're buttery, they're delicious, tender, smooth. And uh, I'm going to teach you one trick right now on how to actually pre-ripen them. Uh, what you'd like to do is uh, if they feel hard, uh, they're not going to be very good. You can instantly ripen them. You know how? That's all you have to do. Slam them on uh, a butcher block, on a table, anything you'd like, and do every little part of it until finally the thing is soft and it's ripened. You've broken down the fibers. Shh, it's a little trick between me and you. So uh, anyway, what we're going to top these avocados with is a few things. So I'll give you some options. So I have some beautiful shrimp over here that just came off the boat and we're going to saute that with some lemon and a few other little ingredients just to make it melt well with the avocado. We'll make also a type of cream sauce with sour cream. We can do it with saffron. We can do it with chipotle pepper flakes, which are smoked keeping more in style with the Cinco de Mayo. We can do it with herbs de Provence. We have some lime we're going to infuse in these sauces as well. So, wow, I'm hungry. Let's start cooking. All right, so we're cutting along the meridian over here, of the lengthwise, and you just roll it around to the other side until you come around one complete uh, whole turn. And look at that. The nut even fell out. That's unusual. Usually the nut actually stays in there and to take it out, you give it a whack and then you twist it and it comes out like this. So that's nice. Next step is to actually take it out. You can feel it's a little bit softer now, but you take one of these big spoons over here and then you just scoop it out very nicely. You go around the meridian of it like this and you just scoop it out. All right, two things. So avocados can kind of brown when, and oxidize if they're exposed to air. So uh, first I wanna put them in a platter over here. But to make them sit nicely, you have to do something to them. They have a round bottom. They don't sit nicely with a round bottom. So what we'll do, it just flatten up the bit, the bottom part a little bit. We'll just take a little sliver off like this, so it has a flat bottom. Look at that, and then it rests very nicely. And uh, we'll do that to all of them. And then after that, we're going to add something to them so that they don't uh, get uh, kind of brownish. And uh, citric acid uh, lime, lemon juice, that'll do it. So you can cut a fresh one and just sprinkle it on top a little bit over there so that uh, the juices get around and it'll help to retard uh, the browning of it. And you can rub it in a little bit over there so it gets all parts of it. And guess what? There's another added bonus to this flavor. Who doesn't love lime? That's going to add that nice little picante flavor to it. All right, so we're going to start on the sour cream sauce next. Mm. I love my snacks in the kitchen. Mm. Cape Cod potato chips, kettle chips. Mm. What a crunch these things give. If you like chips, like me. I find most people are chipaholics. It's very hard to find someone that doesn't love potato chips. I'm mixing up my stone ground mustard. This is going to be a key ingredient in the first sauce that we make. So we'll start with some sour cream. And uh, you can use mayonnaise too, actually. Uh, that works well, but I love the flavor of the sour cream. That actually tends to go well with the rest of the flavors for this sauce. So what I'll do is a couple of heaping teaspoons or t uh, tablespoons let's do let's do three okay mm, mm, delicious and next we'll add uh, a heaping tablespoon or two of the uh, French ground mustard look at this this is another secret weapon Lee and Perrin's Worcestershire sauce Worcestershire sauce goes really well in so many things including this sauce over here. So I put in a couple of drops and we're going to mix this up well. Okay, we're just mixing it up really well. It has a beautiful creamy consistency. You can see the little uh, seeds from the whole grain mustard. Mm. Oh my goodness, it is so good. Now we're going to work on the shrimp. I save this one to last because you want the shrimp to be more fresh tasting. The sauce can sit. You can do the sauce overnight and that saves time as well. So uh, let's uh, start on the shrimp. So you've got a nice uh, medium sized pan over here and we'll put it over uh, a medium heat as well. Uh, and we're going to use some butter. I'll probably use about a tablespoon of butter because it's going to be a butter based sauce. So don't be shy with the butter. It is good for you. So after that, we're, <laughs> we're going to add some herbs. 
Look at that, I have some fresh herbs over here. I have some rosemary, which I'm just gonna throw right in the pan right now. We'll just take it right on off like that, and it's going to infuse really nicely. And look at this sage, isn't this beautiful? These beautiful uh, leaves. We're just gonna crush them up a little bit, and then you get the natural oils from them. Yeah, a little bit more, why not? And uh, we'll let that melt, and then when it starts to sizzle, we're going to add our shrimp. Okay, as you can see, the butter is sizzling and melting nicely. You can smell the herbs amazingly. So, okay, another secret weapon. I highly uh, recommend that you get some of uh, these filaments of saffron. And I put about uh, seven filaments. Won't need much in here because it really does carry a nice flavor. And we're going to let that just kind of melt in the butter. A few more seconds. It is now time to add the crevette, the shrimp. What a sound. Beautiful. Gonna need a little extra help though. We're gonna do a pinch of salt. Coarse sea salt, love it. Fresh cracked pepper. And how about some lime? Two halves of a lime. So let's put in some sour cream on this one. And once again, I'll use uh, just a, this is a, a heaping teaspoon over here, tablespoon. We'll use two of them. And we're going to add a little bit more butter as well. And a little bit more in the herb and lemon department. And uh, that's going to go on top of the shrimp. While the sauce is reducing and developing flavors, let's work on the other cold sauce over here. So this is the sauce that is based with the French mustard and the Worcestershire sauce. So we'll just put a little on top over here. And you know, you can actually turn the avocados the other way around if you'd like. And that makes it for a slightly different presentation. They kind of look egg-like almost. But I like it this way because there's a hole in the middle and it can contain more of the sauce or shrimp, whatever it is that you're adding to it. So let's do some different flavors over here. Anchovies, I love them. I know about half of you out there are gonna say, ooh, but mm, the other half are gonna say, all oh, right on, bring it on. So I'm going to layer a couple of strips on one of them like that. Now, not your cup of tea, fine. We have some French oil cured black olives. You can add a few of those like that. Now you always wanna add a little touch of fresh cracked pepper. That adds a wonderful element to it. Or you know what, how about a few herbs de Provence? You can always put a few uh, little dabs of that with the, uh, make sure the herbs de Provence has lavender in it. That's the real herbs de Provence, otherwise it's not. Beautiful, these look stunning. Next will be the shrimp. And the shrimp, very simply, we'll put a few of them on each one of them like this. And uh, depending on the size of the shrimp, of course, uh, these are a medium sized shrimp. And it, that looks great. It doesn't even have the sauce yet. Now, if you don't like shrimp, use scallops, that's fine too. But, oh, the sauce is beautifully thickened. Shuffle the heat over here. And we're just going to layer a little of that on, okay? Let's do like this. Fantastic. My goodness, it does look good. Okay. Guys, we have Cinco de Mayo the French way. Avocados, you can't go wrong. They're from central Mexico once again. And so we're going to enjoy this feast with family and friends. And please bring them into the kitchen and they'll help to inspire you. You'll have great conversation and you will build memories that will last a lifetime. It's a good cooking to everybody. Take care.